Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi. Welcome to Model Building Tips. In this episode, I'm going to talk about wheel gauge and how to fix out of gauge wheel sets. Having wheel sets in the proper gauge can really help cut down on derailments, which is why I check for it on my own models. A part like this with an axle and a pair of wheels is called a wheel set. Railroad wheels have raised ridges around the edges called flanges. The flanges engage the railhead. Without the flanges, the railroad wouldn't work at all because the wheel sets would just fall right off the track. So when we're talking about wheel gauge, what we're really talking about is the distance between the flanges. Since trains run on rails that are a fixed distance apart, it's important that the wheel sets are engaged. Out of gauge wheel sets can cause derailments. For me, nothing kills the fun of running trains faster than having trains that run badly or come off the track often. If you're like me, then chances are you have that one car that's always come off the track somewhere. Well, a lot of times wheel gauge is the problem. If the wheel gauge is too wide, the car can climb right out of the track. And if the wheel gauge is too narrow, sometimes the car will get snagged on things like turnouts or other complicated track work. Most of the time the wheel sets that come on model locomotives and cars are engaged, but sometimes they're not. I'm going to show you some ways to fix this problem. Regaging a wheel set involves moving one of the wheels along the axle until the gauge is correct. Before we talk about how to do that though, let's take a look at how model wheel sets are put together. Most of the wheels used on model train rolling stock like freight cars or passenger cars are made one of three ways. There are plastic wheels with plastic axles. Usually these are all one piece and the wheels can't be removed from the axle. This one is an N-scale wheel set from Microtrains. Since it's all one piece and the wheels can't move along the axle, there isn't any good way to re-gauge this type of wheel set. If it's out of gauge, I'd recommend replacing it with an aftermarket part. Plastic wheels tend to accumulate and spread dirt more than metal ones do, so I'd recommend replacing them anyway. The second type has metal wheels mounted on a plastic axle. These can sometimes be regaged, but you have to be careful not to bend the plastic axle and warp it, which will make the wheels wobble. The last, and in my opinion best type, has metal wheels on a metal axle. Most often these wheel sets are electrically insulated on one or both sides so that they won't cause a short. You can tell the insulated side because there will be a small plastic bushing around the axle to prevent contact between the wheel and the axle. The wheel on the left has a little black circle around the axle where it touches the wheel. That's the insulated side. The wheel on the right doesn't have the bushing, so this is the non-insulated side. Generally, it's easier to move the insulated wheel, so it's important to make note of it. If both sides are insulated, then you can move either wheel. Actually, there is a fourth type of wheel set that you see on some old kits. Plastic wheels on a metal axle. I don't have any of those to show you because I threw all mine away. Did I mention that I don't like plastic wheels? Most diesel locomotives have yet another type of wheel set, made up of two metal half axles with integrated metal wheels and a plastic gear in between. We'll take a look at diesel models a bit later in the program. First off, how do you know if the wheels are engaged? You need a tool to test the wheel sets. This is an NMRA standards gauge. It can be used to measure a lot of things. One of the things it measures is wheel gauge. These are available for all the major scale and gauge combinations. If you don't already have one, I'd highly recommend picking one up. You can usually find them at hobby shops, online, or direct from the NMRA's website. The flanges, the little raised parts on the inner edges of the wheels, should fit in the slots in the standards gauge. They should go in easily and not catch on the slots. You shouldn't have to force them to go in. If a wheel set fits well, then the gauge is good and you don't need to do anything more. I do this test in all of my product reviews. You can test wheel sets without taking anything apart. I'd recommend putting your model in a foam cradle like this one to protect it and keep it from tipping over while it's upside down. Then test the wheels with the gauge. This one is good. Uh-oh, this one is too narrow. See how the flange is too far inward to fall into the second slot? And this one is too wide. In this case, one flange is too far outward to fall into the second slot. Railroad cars, either freight or passenger, are generally the easiest type of models to fix, so we'll start with those. Sometimes you can get away with taking the wheel set off the model directly. However, to prevent damage to detailed freight or passenger cars, I'd recommend first removing the truck with the out-of-gauge wheel set from the model. Trucks are usually held in place with a bolster screw. Once the truck is off the model, remove the wheel set. Most of the time you can just spread the side frames of the truck slightly so that the pointy end of the axle can come out. For trucks with rotating end caps, you'll need to push down on the wheels to disengage the clips that hold the axle ends. Maybe the simplest way to re-gauge a wheel set is to grab one wheel in each hand and twist. Twist and pull if the gauge is too narrow and twist and push if the gauge is too wide. As soon as you feel a wheel move, stop and retest it. If it's in gauge, then you're done. If not, then repeat the process. Be sure that the wheel that moved isn't loose on the axle after you do this. With most good quality wheel sets, this won't be an issue. 
If it is, a drop of super glue will usually be enough to hold it in place. Also, some axles are not uniform in diameter. See how the part between where the wheels go is thicker? This will limit the amount that a wheel can be moved. Ideally, with this type of axle, if both wheels are pushed inward as far as they can go, they should be engaged, but it doesn't always work out that way. Be very careful using the twist method with plastic axles. As I mentioned earlier, you don't want to bend the axle. If you're having trouble regaging a wheel set with plastic axles, you may want to look into replacing the wheel sets with higher quality aftermarket metal ones. Sometimes you'll get a stubborn wheel set that can't be regaged this way. If so, then you'll need to use the wheel puller method. This is a tool called the puller from Northwest Shortline. It can be used to pull or push wheels into gauge. The tool consists of a metal frame with a special screw and a hex wrench that can be used to apply force to a model axle. The tool comes with a metal plate that's useful when the wheel diameter is smaller or similar in size to the slot in the side. To make the wheel gauge narrower, position the wheel set so that the insulated wheel is against the metal plate and the other end of the axle is toward the screw. Tighten the screw to apply force to the opposite end of the axle. Go slowly here as most of the time you won't need to move the wheel very far. As with the twist method, once you feel the wheel set move, check the gauge again. If the gauge is correct, then you're done. If not, then tighten the screw again and repeat as necessary. To make the wheel gauge wider, position the wheel set so that the insulated wheel is against the plate and the other end of the axle is pointed away from the tool. Use the screw to apply force to the end of the axle. As before, check the gauge as soon as you feel the wheel move and repeat if needed. For wheel sets with rotating end caps, I'd recommend removing the plastic cap from the end of the axle first so that the screw doesn't destroy it. These are really tiny, so be sure to put it in some kind of container so that it won't get lost. You can press the cap back onto the end of the axle when you're finished. Regaging the wheels on a locomotive is a little more complicated. You'll need to partially disassemble the truck with the offending wheel set. Once again, I'd recommend using a foam cradle to hold the model and protect the details. If you're careful, you should be able to do this without taking the model apart. If you're worried about damaging fragile details, you can opt to remove the shell from the chassis. I'm not going to go into detail about how to remove the shell in this program. Usually you'll need to remove the couplers. Some diesels have additional screws that hold the shell to the chassis. Regardless of whether they have four or six wheels, most HO scale diesel trucks are built to one of two designs. What I think of as the Atherin blue box design has cosmetic plastic side frames and the electrical contacts and axle bearings are inside the wheels on the axles. This design is used on many Atherin and some Proto 2000 models. The other design is used by a number of manufacturers, including Atlas and Kato. Some Atherin models use it as well. These trucks have the electrical pickups and bearings on the axle ends, and the side frames are actually supporting the wheel sets. Both designs have a bottom cover plate that needs to be removed. Use a small screwdriver to gently pry the clips on the side until the cover plate comes off. Sometimes it helps to use two screwdrivers, one to keep the clips on one side from snapping back together while you pry the other side. Most of the time this is as far as you need to go. If the model has the Atlas Cotto style trucks, Push the side frames apart slightly so that the ends of the axles are no longer held in place by the electrical contact strips. With the cover removed, you should be able to lift the offending wheel set out of its slot. I usually use the twist method to re-gauge diesel wheel sets. I sometimes hold the gear in one hand instead of the opposite wheel set. This puts less stress on the plastic axle. One thing to watch out for with Atherin style trucks is to be careful with the inner axle bearings. Make sure that the bearing is free to spin on the axle. If you push the wheels closer together, the axle gear can clamp the bearing against the back of the wheel and prevent it from spinning. This will make the model run very badly if it runs at all. With the Atherin style wheel sets, I try to split the difference so that the gap between the bearing and the axle gear is more or less even on both sides. While you have the axle out of the model, inspect the axle gear for cracks. On some older Proto 2000 models, this was a problem. A cracked gear will also make the model run badly. Atherin sells replacement gears that will work with this style of truck. When you're satisfied that the gauge is correct, put the wheel set back into the truck and reassemble it. With the Atlas Cotto style trucks, make sure that the axle ends are all inside the holes in the electrical contact strips and that the side frames are pushed together as far as they'll go. The bottom cover has prongs that engage the side frames to hold them in place, and it's important that everything goes back together as it should. If you have an Atherin style truck and you move the side frames, be sure to push them back together as well, although make sure that they're not so tight that they clamp the wheels and act like a brake. The side frames on this style of truck are purely cosmetic and they shouldn't actually touch the wheels. On many N-scale diesels, the entire truck will pop out of the chassis. Never force it. It should come out fairly easily. This is a Broadway Limited SD70 Ace. 
With the truck removed, disengage the clips on each end. Then gently spread the side frames and the truck should come apart. The wheel sets on this one need to be snapped out of the truck. Again, be gentle and don't use too much force on these small parts. If you watched my review of this locomotive, you might recall that all of the wheels were narrow in gauge. I'm using the twist and pull method to widen the gauge. I'll do each wheel set one at a time, then check them against my standards gauge. When I'm done and have all the wheel sets snapped back into place, I'll start reassembling the truck. The holes in the copper contact strips have to fit over the ends of the axles. The side frames then snap back into place. Be sure that they're snapped in all the way. I also like to check to make sure that the wheels turn freely before reattaching the truck to the locomotive. Test the locomotive after reassembly to make sure it still runs as it should. You never want to use the twist method to re-gauge steam engine drivers. Let me say that again. Never use the twist method to re-gauge steam engine drivers. Always use a puller. The reason for this is geometry. The crank pins on steam locomotive drivers are usually set 90 degrees apart from one side to the other. This is known as quartering. Whether it's actually 90 degrees or something else, it's vital that the angle is exactly the same on each driver. If it's not, the distance between the crank pin holes as the drivers rotate won't be constant. Since the side rods have a fixed length, if the engine is out of quarter, they will bind and the locomotive will run badly or not at all. To get to the drive wheels on most steam engines, you first need to remove the bottom cover plate. Even though these screws look identical, I'm arranging them in the same order that they came out. Many engines come with a wrench like this one to loosen the side rods. Use the wrench to remove the crank pins. Once the pins are loose, I can lift the wheel set out. In this case, I want to narrow the gauge slightly. It's important to make sure that the crank pin hole is in the U-shaped opening. This way, the flat part of the wheel is against the side of the tool and the pressure will be even. On the other end, it's important that the screw is dead center against the axle and not putting pressure on the opposite wheel. Now I can tighten the screw and the pressure should move the wheel. A little at a time is the rule, as I don't want to push the wheel too far and make the wheel set narrow and gauge. Looks like I got it. All it needed was a tiny adjustment. When putting the wheel set back in the engine, make sure that the axle bearings are seated properly. I'm going to put the bottom cover on the engine first. This is because it's difficult enough to replace the crank pin screws without also having to worry about the axle falling out while you're doing that. Once that's done, I'll put the engine on its side so I'm not fighting gravity to get the screw back in. I had to do this with my fingers as it's hard to get started. Once the crank pin threads are engaged, I can finish with the wrench. Again, make sure to hold the wheel you're working on and not the opposite one. We don't want to put stress on the axle and risk twisting the drivers. All that's left is to give it a test run to make sure everything still works okay. Looks good. The engine runs smoothly with no hint of binding. As I mentioned earlier, if the drivers were out of quarter, the side rods would bind and make the engine run roughly or not at all, depending on how bad it was. It's impossible to cover every single model in a program like this, so I tried to pick some typical examples. Chances are any models with out-of-gauge wheel sets that you have will be similar to mine. If not, work slowly and take the time to figure out how to get them apart. Having all your wheel sets in the proper gauge makes it a lot less likely that you'll have derailments on your layout. For me, anyway, that makes it a lot more fun to run trains. Thanks for watching and good luck with your projects.